So hi guys and welcome to my first tutorial on Noteflow. Today we'll see how we can create this beautiful abstract effect uh, just by using Houdini 20. Um, so let's start. I will just uh, drop a node called Geo and then name it abstract FX. I will copy this name and change the color by pressing C and make it purple. Then I will save and then I will drop the name that I previously copied so I can save my scene and work safely. Going inside, I will start my effect by creating a simple sphere. I will leave it as default and then creating like a transform node, I will scale it slightly on the Y axis. I will proceed by creating a scatter node and setting the default uh, point scatter value to 1500. Um, then I will start by creating a, a line, change its length to 0 0.5 and I like the orientation so I will not change the direction. I will just change the point to 12 so we have more points composing our line and it will be easily, more easily bendable in our simulation. Um, I will change the color of these two to make sure that they are green, so sort of like an input color. And then I will create a copy to point to copy all this line, this simple line on every single point of the scatter. And we should have something like this. I will just momentarily disable the point visualization. And from now we can proceed to create the whole vellum simulation setup. And to do that, the first step is to create some constraints. Um, we need some uh, hair constraints. So we have a vellum configured hair that we can plug in and we can add a vellum solver. To connect all three together, I will hold J and that will just work. Make sure you're on the first frame because in a simulation, every frame is dependent from the one before. That means that if you are at frame 24, you need to calculate frame 23 and so on. On the solver, I will go onto the forces and I will change the gravity to zero. So right now they will not be affected by gravity. And in the solver, I will set the time scale to 0 0.5. That means that the simulation will be um, two times lower. As you can see, it starts moving. But and the main thing is that they are completely detaching from the main sphere that we created before. What we need to do is to create a group using a group expression. Um, this group will be called uh, roots and inside of this group I will set the group type to primitive, two points. And then I will choose one of the presets and I will choose first point of primitive. In this way I am selecting only the first point of each line. And by isolating that in a group called roots, I will fit that to the vellum hair uh, in the pinpoint. In this way, I'm saying to vellum, uh, simulate everything but not these points. And instead of vellum solver, if we go inside, we can actually add something to make the effect a little bit cooler. Let's start by, us by using a pop attract. As the name implies with this node, by default, we will have an attract an attraction behavior. So if we press play, we have something like that. Uh, in my case, I wanted to have the opposite. So I will set this reversal distance to 30. So now the, uh, the hair will go on the other direction. By using a pop force, we can add some wind. So I will just simply change the amplitude to 2.5 and this weird size to two, so we have bigger squares. And I will go out and preview what I'm doing, but just to make sure I will reset my simulation in the solver. Pressing play, we will see that we have such a natural and beautiful result. Uh, it looks like some sort of plant connect adjacent pieces. This node will help us to connect all the points that are closer. So by proximity, it will merge some points. Setting to adjacent points and setting this value to something like 3.2. I will see it's just a mess. Although it's pretty interesting, it's still a mess. Uh, to make it more appealing, we will blur the position attribute by adding an add blur. Uh, make sure to check these pin border points or this one 
kind of, sort of won't work. So by doing that and changing this one, we can see the effect is a little bit more, it's a little bit cooler. And I will set that to 50 for the sake of this. I mean, you can change it to whatever you feel like. Um, then I will proceed adding an attribute delete to delete all the attributes that comes from the Velum simulation. Um, and now the only one I will leave, so I will delete non-selected, and the only one I will leave is velocity, because I, was, I want to use velocity as a remap uh, attribute for the color. So by adding a attribute adjust color, and right now we are remapping the CD, um, we can set it to remap attribute, and I will set it to V. Um, if you don't like this display, you can change the values that you're seeing to something that is more appealing for you. And you also have some other presets. I ended up liking the uh, black body version. I'm sorry, the, the black to orange version. After you have something like that, you are almost done. What will happen if we now go to Solaris is that we will see all these curves exploding. So by ending a lock net and going inside, I will add a simple uh, scene, import all, and I will import my effect. You can see it's, as I said, like sort of exploding. This is because uh, Solaris is setting the width of each curve to a default value that we need to fix, that we need to change. Uh, in order to do that, I will add a simple attribute wrangle and write a very simple snippet of code. I will say that the um, attribute, that it's a float, so float attribute width, uh, it's equal to something that we can define. So by creating a channel reference float, um, I will name it width, and I will end up with semicolon, and press here. We have this one that we can use to control the width attribute, as you can see here, is changing. So let me set it as something like very small and still see it's still pretty big, but it's working. That's the important part. Uh, I figured out that for me, a value very, very small as something like 0.0007 uh, worked. So here we have it. Um, then we can start adding stuff in Solaris because our setup is finished. Just to be clear, I will add a null connected, uh, make it black, and name it abstract effects out. And it's pretty clean, but we can press L to auto layout all of this. Going again into the LockNet, I uh, will start adding some lights. So, Karma. Uh, physical sky, it's a great choice. It gives like very nice lighting straight out of the box. Um, I will set intensity to something like three, probably more later, we'll see. And it's lighting up this side. What I want to do is to visualize lights. So I will click here and I want something that like this is the sun, right? So I want it pointing a little bit more um, down. I like the angle, but I want to point it a little bit more down, like sort of like in midday. So we have like a stronger and more harsh lighting. Once we have all of this, we just need to set up a camera. So I will just click here. That will set up a camera based on my view right now. So I will lock it so I can control it. And I will set it to, to a place that I like. Just for visualization sake, I will go into the camera physical sky and change this background color when we render to something darker. So something like that, I guess. Let's start with camera XP and yeah we need some more light so I will set the intensity to something higher go into the sun and change it the angular size and see how it affects it and the azimuth so the direction of the light maybe something that's more frontal yeah something like that by creating a karma I render settings and this should always be here because it's how you define the settings for the render so I will just stop this one right now and 
in the render settings, I can set how the resolution that I want my project to be in and the camera that I want to render with. Right now it's camera one. If I name this one main cam, uh, now I should drag and drop it here because the name is different. I can use this one, it's another syntax, or I can go here and manually select that. And here it is. Uh, now that he knows the camera, uh, we can set the output picture where we want to save it. So that should be it. If you want to have a more artistic control, you can go into the main cam and change the view to orthographic. Uh, just because in this case, I think it will look a little bit nicer. So I hope you liked the tutorial and thank you for sticking until the end. I hope you learned something new and I will see you soon in another one.